Hello, hello, friends. Um, it's Michelle from Tape and Twine on Instagram. And I'm here today to talk about a really important subject. I think that no matter what your type of junk journal you make is important. And whether you're a beginner or a seasoned pro, I think this is a very valuable discussion to have. And I hope that not only will you learn more about me, but you'll learn more about yourself through this video and maybe we can have a conversation or start a conversation about um, aesthetics and personal style. So a little bit about me before we start. I have been into uh, being an artist as long as I can remember. I have always made things with my hands and I've always experimented and it's not something that I only enjoy, it's something I feel compelled to do. And I got away from that when I got busy raising children. And the creativity in my life started going down, and as a result, the quality of my life started going down. So, I, a bunch of years ago, my husband encouraged me through the purchase of a small art studio to start my own business and to be who I am. And I didn't really know what I had to offer, and it was a journey I had to go on um, creatively. And I ended up in the world of art teaching, which ironically was the only thing I ever wanted to do as a kid that I felt passionate about. But I went the more traditional route with a college degree, and I worked in communications. So here I was through the journey of art, becoming an art teacher um, through my little studio that I called Creative Cottage. So I have a business called Creative Cottage Studio and I teach art lessons at a local art center. And I teach mostly polymer clay, which I enjoy and really taps into the whimsy of part of who I am and has been something that has filled me in so many areas. But for my personal art, I, I always did a lot of everything, but never really landed in any one place. That is until I found junk journals. Um, there's something about junk journals that, that checks all my boxes. It's something that as soon as I found it, I knew this was where my passion lied. But just because I've always done artistic things or because somebody's always done crafts doesn't mean they already know what their style is. And personal style and expression is a really important part of creativity, but it's the part I think people most struggle with and I think it causes them the most frustration. Um, I'm in several Facebook groups through, through um, junk journaling and on Instagram. And I find that there's a, there's a lot of talk on those groups about people feeling not feeling confident in what they're doing and really putting down their work, putting down what they do. And I think a lot of that frustration comes from trying to make something your own look like somebody else's. And I think all of us share on Instagram and inspire each other but inspiration it should be something that allows you to put a twist on it that feels you you know very genuine to you and when we are trying just to copy something somebody else does then that's where that frustration and that confusion comes from so I'm hoping that this um, video will help you, if you're struggling, find your personal style, clarify that a little bit more, and give you a little bit of a sense of peace and direction. And um, I'm, I'm gonna try to be a little bit more organized in my examples, which I don't think I did in my video yesterday that I filmed, that's why I'm redoing it. And I'm hoping it'll also show my journey and my style as it's developed. So let me start right at the beginning and hopefully through my style, I can um, explain how you can find your style. So in front of you are some, some books and these are some of my first books um, 
and I think the only way you can find style is to just jump in and start working. Try to work as often as you can and just keep going and that journey will slowly unfold. The story of who you are will slowly unfold. So I'm going to start with um, my first couple of books. This book here I ended up using as my 2018 journal and as you can see it is a complete chunky monkey to the point where it is alligatored so much that I can't really even close it. See it is I have so much in here and I like that to a certain degree that's one of the things that first attracted me to junk journals was all this texture and all these layers and the tactile um, interactivity of, of junk journals. So I do like this, but this is not very functional when you're alligatoring to this, to this size. So I had to ask myself, why do I make books that get this big, which is what happened at the beginning. And the truth is I love to work in them and I love to put lots of stuff in them. I think I'm a collector and I collect too much stuff. And what I really loved about junk journals was the idea that, you know, I might have 15 letters from somebody, but I could just take the two that were special and put them in a book and write about that person or whatever and then get rid of the rest. Or maybe I have a special memory and I have like so many little pieces and parts hanging around, souvenirs from that, but I could take pictures and put that in the book and get rid of them. And start condensing my story and the things I wanted to say to one place. But that means I work a lot in the journals. So what I found was at the beginning, I was putting journals together in a way that had so many things already in them. And I do tend to do that, especially like for gifts and things. I love tuck spots. I love envelopes. I love all the little things that we love about junk, junk journals. But what happens is when you make all those details, if your binding is not big enough, then you're going to have this problem and you're going to have this problem a lot. And that is what tends to happen. I also found that I was making my signatures too big and I needed to have more smaller signatures, which again, is a, it's all a learning process. And I look at this and I don't mind this because this is just all part of my journey. I don't, um, I don't punish myself for the mistakes I've made along the way because they're all, they're all parts of the journey and I, I just like it. I like looking at it and remembering where I was at with this. So another thing that I realized is I'm very passionate personally about recycling and using things that are going to be thrown away. I love the idea of rehabbing something that was loved and then not loved or was used and then is being pitched and giving it a second life. So the, pro the only problem with that is when you're rehabbing a book, you're using the existing spine and you have to work within that spine. And you know, I think as time has gone on, I've realized if I want to make a really chunky monkey book, then use a recycled material and build my own spine. Don't try to work within the spine that's there. So sometimes now I will work in the original book and sometimes I won't. And that, that was all part of learning. Um, and if I want to do chunky monkey, which I like, and I want to do my style chunky monkey, I just need to do it in a way that works well. So those were some first little glimpses into some decisions and things that then made me start refining my style. So this book I made probably early on in my journal making um, journey and I've kept it plain. Number one, because I know that it already fits perfect without me putting anything in it, which means this will end up like the book I just showed you and I don't want it to be like that, so I use it more as an example of what junk journals are for people who don't know. But I will say it's a good example of the type of book I make for myself because I work so much in the books, I need them to be plain. I need them to be ready to be filled. 
So I don't tend to already have everything decorated and embellished and collaged because that's the fun of working in my book. So for me, the books I make for myself, I tend to be very simple. Now, I'm gonna talk a lot about my personal style and I want to be very crystal clear about this. Personal style is just that, it's personal style. There's no wrong or right. And just because I choose something for myself doesn't mean that I judge anybody else or I dislike or like somebody else. I can accept that everybody's style is their own style and I can appreciate it and admire it and drool over it knowing that that'll probably never be my personal style. And that's okay, it's sort of like um, somebody that that sings folk music. They might have a beautiful folk music sensibility, but they really enjoy rock music. If they make rock music, it doesn't quite work. It doesn't mean they can't really admire their peers that are making rock music, um, and it doesn't diminish anything they're doing in folk music. It just means everybody expresses themselves intrinsically different, but they can still admire the work of other people. So when I talk about my style, as this video progresses, I want you to understand that if you fit into one of the other styles I talk about that I don't work in, I am certainly not judging anybody else or saying that my way is the best way. Everybody's way is their own way and I admire all of them. So I just wanna make that clear because I, I felt like when I watched my video yesterday, I didn't make that clear and I don't want anybody to think that I think one way is better than the other because I really don't. I think that's the beauty of junk journals. You can make them a gazillion different ways and it's all great. So for me, there's some things that I have realized about myself. I have realized, number one, that I tend to love, everybody has a different part of junk journaling that's their favorite. My favorite is the hunt. My favorite is knowing I have a theme which I have probably about seven in a notebook right now going. And I have folders for each one of those themes. And the hunt is finding pieces to go in that folder. And when that folder is full of pieces, then I make my book. So my books tend to be one of a kind in the sense that they're not based off of a kit or based off of a scrapbook book that can be used again. So you're never gonna see that book again because you're never gonna find those particular pieces again. And because I'm kind of passionate about the whole recycling and reusing thing and giving things new life, my books are primarily not kit-based or they are original pages from books, original pieces of artwork, original ephemera. They're used once, they're used in the book I'm making and they're never gonna be used again. There might be a little bit of scrapbook paper or kits smattered in for um, utilitarian reasons, but for the most part, I don't look to kits to do the decorative aspects of my books. So because of that, it takes a long time for me to curate the pages that go into a book. If I'm making a book for someone, and this is a lot of the reasons why I haven't sold yet, is because I wanna take my time looking for the right pieces and that can take a while. So in a book that is mine, that I'm making for me, you're going to see a lot of pages. There is some scrapbook page and I think I was a little bit more heavy at the beginning with the scrapbook page than I am now. But my books primarily always contain certain things. They always contain music paper. Um, they, they always have vintage books. A lot of it is based off children's books because I have a passion for children's books. They always have lots of little places to, to add things. Vintage textiles, um, lots of pockets. I always pick like a color theme and kind of stay within that palette. Um, I like to use actual parts of advertisements and packaging materials for pockets and things like that. I usually, especially if I'm rehabbing a book, I usually use parts of that book within the journal, which you'll see. I love to coffee dye and tea dye. Um, and my sewing machine's a big part of what I do. Uh, I love vintage trims. Uh, I love vintage trims, especially things with color. 
And I've always been drawn to very bold letters and numbers, very graphic. I was a graphic artist and um, that was part of my job in communications. And so I always tend to go towards um, print and, and visually attractive texts and typography and fonts. Um, I love nature. Um, I love nature, but and I love flowers, birds, but those are pretty synonymous with the junk journal community. But I would say I'm more woodland than I am English garden. Not that I don't love English garden, and I probably will make some English garden books, but I tend to choose things based more on forest and woodland than I do like a proper formal garden. So here's an example of me using the book. This was an old library book. I used the back page with the library pocket in it. I usually use the title page somewhere. I try to put different things throughout the journal that reflect the book I'm rehabbing. I have some favorite children's books that I use throughout um, this book, but you'll see them come up time and time again because I have some real favorites. And I don't punish myself for imperfection. This page uh, got sewn in crooked and I, I could have ripped it out, but I didn't because I kind of like that. And it, it is who I am. I'm, I'm a very imperfect person and it re this is my journal and it reflects who I am. Um, I am not a measure, straight edge kind of person. I'm a rip, fly by the seat of my pants kind of creator. Um, in my personal life, I would say I'm a bit of a type A and I am a little bit of a control freak. I'm a perfectionist for sure. And I think in my art, I don't want to be any of those things. I need to not be those things. So that's why I kind of embrace the imperfection. and. My mother is an amazing um, sewer and quilter and she has always encouraged me to sew and I've always gone against it because to me there's too much cutting and straightness and all that stuff I just said that I have a hard time, you know, hard time with in my personal life and I didn't want to bring it into that. So she bought me a sewing machine and I never used it and then when I figured out you could sew paper and it could be imperfect, well, I can't live without my sewing machine now. So I'm gonna flip through this quick because I have a lot to go through. I tend to pick things that have visuals that make me happy. They're, they're self-indulgent, they're just for me. So I had goats growing up. So when I saw this, it went with the color scheme and it was goats and it was vintage and it was children's book. So it was like, check, 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 this is that. So then when I go to it, I, I you know, it makes me happy. It's sort of like this whole art of decluttering and they say, keep things that spark joy. I only put things in my book that spark joy. If something doesn't spark joy in me, it doesn't go in my books. I have a thing for envelopes um, and I love making little things that go in and out of books and I love metal. I love like, uh, I don't know, I, I'm a very kind of like mechanical person and um, I just i have always loved like gears and what makes things work so I'm always drawn to metals and hardware. Um, and I like taking like junk mail and things again and salvaging them. So that's kind of what I do for my own journals. I, I make things very simple and clean. I don't really decorate them so that I can leave myself lots of room to actually create in them. Now, when I create for other people, I don't tend to do that. I put in tags and a lot of decorative pieces because uh, as a gift journal, I, I don't know how comfortable they are with making those things, so I wanna provide them for it, them. And I also do things on the page that prompt them to write. So, um, because a lot of people, their biggest thing is they don't know what to do with it. So I would put like um, a favorite vacation place map of theirs or things that I know about them so it prompts them to write about those things on their page if they have nothing else to write about. I've gone over that a lot more in my Jersey Girl video. If you want to learn more about how to customize a journal, then go see that video. I won't cover that so much here. Again, this is a big graphic five and, and I just love that. So this is like an example of what I do for myself. But I also, as someone who's always been into art, I also experiment a lot. And I, 
I have found that I have kind of two styles. I have this style that's very vintage and simple and sort of like aged and ripped and, and well-loved. And then I have this style that is bright and over the top and, um, you know, like just, it, it kind of feels like childhood in a book. And this one actually reflects childhood for me. And again, you'll see it's one of my first books because look, I did not put one thing in here yet to work in. This was originally going to be my child memory book. And if I even attempt to start working in this, it's gonna get too alligatored. So what I'd have to decide to do is take off the spine and rebuild the spine or just keep it as is and just enjoy it as I enjoy it. So. Having said that, that gives me a good opportunity to talk a little bit about your personal style. So a lot of times people are trying to figure out what their personal style is. I have some notes here that I wanna go through. So I, I will say that the first step to finding your personal style if you are struggling with it is to set up a Pinterest account, an Instagram account, Probably an Instagram account would be my biggest suggestion. And YouTube, of course. And start just watching things, looking at things, and, and set up your feed for Instagram with things that you just really like. And don't um, pick people based on, oh, I like butterflies, I'm gonna find somebody who just does butterfly journals. Start like really um, just liking things that you intrinsically like. Then if there's somebody that you keep noticing you're liking, go into who they follow. They're generally probably inspired by people that do similar things or have inspired them to develop their style. And sometimes you'll find people that are now more in line with what you keep going back to. And that's not to say in my feed, I don't have like three or four different types of artists I follow. I do because I have lots of different tastes. However, I can tell you the people I keep going back to and liking and looking at their stuff, there's something that they're doing that's resonating with me and it's going to impact my style. I'm never gonna try to imitate them. I might try to imitate them or a couple projects just to get a feel of what their process is, but ultimately they'll inspire me to refine my style. So. One of the early people that I really enjoyed was Mrs. Cog, which I think everybody knows by now. But I will say something about her journals, which was sort of an eye-opener for me and my style. When I look at her journal flip-throughs, I say to myself, I could never write in that journal because her journals to me are art pieces in themselves. They're something I would put on a shelf and when I just wanted to relax, I would flip through and enjoy all the pieces and parts that she puts into that journal. And I would like to own some of those types of journals, but those are not the type of journals I'm going to make because I'm somebody who wants to use the journals. That's not to say I wouldn't make a journal now and then for myself that I wouldn't write in. This is what that has turned into. And in fact, Mrs. Cog, watching her videos made me realize I don't have to write in every journal. Some journals are okay just to flip through and be happy about. I think sometimes I would buy another artist journal for that reason, because I would wanna just enjoy being in their style for a while. So this journal is very much the other side of me, which is bright and colorful and celebrates um, childhood and bright colors and things like that. So I have used in this book vintage trim, some of my favorite vintage um, children's books that I enjoyed as a child, and lots of things that mean something to me, like paper that I used to write my pen pal in, and some of my favorite books. Maurice Sendak is one of my favorite illustrators. This book Miss Susie is one of my all-time favorites and the images from this book have always stayed with me. So I bought a cheap copy that was damaged so I could cut it up. I couldn't cut up my original. The charms that I put on, the things that I put in here, like Narnia, these are books of mine that I loved as a child. 
this is more like me reflecting on my childhood than it is about a book that I want to write in. And I've realized it's okay for me to keep this book just as it is. And maybe I will put some things in the pockets, but this might be a, just a really great book for me to go through one day when I have grandchildren to tell them about my childhood and the things I liked. You know, this is Little House on the Prairie and Pokey Little Puppy, because my mom used to say I was the Pokey Little Puppy. And um, as you can see, it's very bright and colorful and the opposite of what the other book was. But it's still me because I tend to be, um, even though there's a lot of scrapbook paper in here because I was looking for, you know, really colorful things, it's not based on a kid. Everything in here is just original. Like these are original Clue pieces from my favorite game. We all played Clue. And these are actually from the game I played, which is really cool. And, and brings back so many memories for me. So sometimes a book is okay just to sit and look through and remember the things or just enjoy because they're beautiful things. So that's a second type of book. Are you, so the question is, are you looking for a book that you wanna work in, that you want others to work in? Or are you looking for a book that's more of an art piece, more of a piece for people just to enjoy interacting with? My lap book, which you can find on my channel, is exactly that. I'm never going to use this. I'm just gonna look at it and enjoy it. Um, I put a lot of time and thought into this book this lap book, and there's a story, a narrative that I created for this book, and I'm okay never using it. So there's something for you to consider. Are you looking for usable books? Are you looking for books that just make people happy and that they can enjoy the beauty of? So that's, that's another uh, style question for you. Here's a style question. Are you more about fabrics, or are you more about um, hardcover? I tend to be more about hardcover. Here's my current um, calendar. This is my calendar for my day book, everything I'm writing about. I'm a hard book kind of girl. But I really, really want to learn more about soft cover books. So I just, I made this in the last year. I haven't done the inside yet. Um, and I had a ball making it. It's probably not sewn correctly but I don't even care. I love the colors. I love the bird picture on it. It's very much me, the hardware and the key and the wildlife forest, but it, it pulls together elements that are my aesthetic, but it's kind of pushing me out of my comfort zone. Now what I fill it with will probably be more simple, like my style has kind of developed into, and then it'll reflect me on the inside as well, but the hardware, the elements of, of who you are are what you start reflecting, no matter how different you make your projects. So, um, and then there's little projects, right? There's little projects. So this little project I made, um, and it was just sort of this fun little pressed flower nest with a little booklet in it. And again, um, there's collaging, but it's very simple. Um, I tend to go for either bright colors all together like a carnival or very muted colors. There's not a lot in between. And again, it's very forest and feather and birds and, and shells and things like that because that's sort of what my color palette is when I'm working with like sort of a woodland kind of a book. Um, so, so here's the thing. When you're looking at people's work, if you're really struggling with what is it that you like about their work, break it down. Like, is it the theme that they're always using? Is it the florals that they're using, the colors that they're using? Or is it things like the little tags and the extras? Sometimes I find that it's really like the way something is put together that I'm always loving about it. So, um, I want to talk a little bit about some people that have influenced me and why and how that sort of influenced my style. And I'm going to put a couple other books down so I can sort of talk about that a little bit. 
Okay, so first I wanna talk a little bit about the influence I've had with people that don't use kits like myself. I have nothing against kits. In fact, I love kits. I'm oftentimes like so impressed with the gorgeous kits people put together. And um, if you go to my Etsy, like my personal Etsy, I probably have 40 kits in my cart that I haven't pulled the trigger on. And part of that is because I, I get so overwhelmed by the choices. They're all so beautiful, I can't choose. And I end up like not pulling the trigger, I don't know. And, and the other thing too is I think my, my insecurity with using kits that other people have already used so well and maybe I'll use them in a way that won't be as appealing, which really shouldn't matter because they're, they're not, this art isn't for anybody else but yourself, so I really need to just get over that. But I will say that there's some people that have really influenced me that I enjoy that don't really use kits. The first of which is um, Joanna Clough, which I think we all know her, Johanna, not Joanna, Johanna. I should know that I've watched like hundreds of her videos it, it feels like hundreds of hours I love her I was drawn to her aesthetic her sort of shabby chic 1950s bright colored saturated children's books um, putting all sorts of things together lots of baubles and beads and fabrics and how usable her journal journals are that's when I first understood for me that those were the things that were starting to become part of my style. So this book, which is a much bigger binding than uh, because I've now made this spine, um, I'm not saying this is a jo Johanna book, but it is in inspired by her in the sense that she uses a lot of simplicity on her covers and these kinds of color schemes. Now I interpret things a lot differently than she does, but I definitely know where she has inspired me through this book. And I definitely have taken pointers from her as far as how to use vintage books and that it's okay to put colorful children's books in an adult journal. That has been very inspirational for me. I will also say TaylorMade Journals makes gorgeous journals. Her flip throughs um, just really speak to a lot of my aesthetic. And then a friend of mine, Amy, at the Thrifted Cottage, what I really love about her is her aesthetic is really not my aesthetic. And I'm trying to do incorporate some of the little things she does to see if it fits within my work. But she really concentrates on textiles, where I, this is where I really started to see the difference in personal style. She concentrates on textures and florals and she's the wallpaper queen she's a ripper she puts lots of vintage trims and laces together she sews and she does it beautifully and I don't even know if she uses scrapbook paper in any of her books and I've never seen her use a kit but yet everything seems to go together very well and it's very rough because everything is ripped but yet it's so polished she has this fine, hard and soft edge married beautifully. And then um, that made me really realize that I am more of a book, heavy book supply person. I base a lot of my book, my, my journals on vintage books, old books, recycled books, book pages. So it made me realize it's okay to be sort of like associated with a material where I associate Amy with fabrics, I associate myself with book pages and that becomes part of, of my style. Um, the other thing too is when I talk about Woodland, this is my current journal for this year and as you can see I'm starting to get a lot more free with my stitching on my, on my um, machine. I'm very much inspired um, by Susie in MN that's her her um, her Instagram and I'm gonna try to list all of these she is um, just the, her work is amazing uh, Susie's work is very free and open and 
it's very much more of an art journal than it is a junk journal, even though it is a junk journal. And it's made me loosen up a bit and explore more with other materials. So this is actual birch bark, and this is tissue paper, and these are all book pages, and these are stamps. So I'm starting to develop that layering, but it's nature-based, it's forest-based. And again, I'm coming back to the word. I'm, I'm very heavy on words. And you know, things, it's okay to put multiple, because this is my book for this year, I really put a lot of things I love in here. And I'm not gonna show everything because I have some personal things in here, but it's like space, nature, really inspiring to me. And you'll see that I, I, I mix quite often the whimsical, this is a fairy door, with the natural. Um, it's just very much who I am, and I, I make the books for myself extremely simple so that I can fill them. There's that, that book again that I just love. I can fill them with the things that I want. And I've really learned from a lot of you guys that I can use materials that aren't necessarily materials you would use. And I'm learning the fabric end, but I'm doing it in my style. So there's a t-shirt I loved. I loved the graphic. So I took it and I put Fabri-Tac on a piece of cardboard and I stretched it and then I sewed it. And I'm gonna put some like, um, probably some lined paper on the back so I can journal on the back of this. But again, it's the inspiration of knowing what you can do with a, a, a material that makes you go out of your own box. Um, I do wanna talk about a few more people and a few more things. And I hope that I'm not overwhelmed you. So. I would say, when you're looking for your personal style, know a few things. First of all, not all your projects have to look alike. All of these are my style and they all look different. Um, this is very much my style, different. But there's, there's common threads that run throughout. And you'll figure out those threads the more you follow other people and the more you work. Work on lots of little projects if you're feeling overwhelmed with what your style is. Do some tags, do some collaging, um, do some folders, pamphlets, make some books out of envelopes, and just kind of see what feels right for you, what you're comfortable in. So I went over the people who don't use kits, but I wanna talk a little bit about people that use kits really well. So of course the first person to really inspire me and the first person that I realized I associated my style with was Nick the Booksmith. And the reason I knew that was because I follow a lot of people and I enjoy a lot of people equally. I enjoy Nick the Booksmith. I also enjoy Artie Mays, Tracy Fox, Mrs. Cog, Wendy's Journal Adventure, and all of them have very different styles. I would, I would say that Artie Mays, Tracy Fox um, are a lot more floral. Wendy is a lot more zhuzh as she calls it. And that's probably not the space I live in, but I so enjoy it and I so enjoy what they put together. Um, but when I would watch Nick, I would realize that's something I would make. That's something I want to make. When I watch the other people, as much as they inspire me, I usually make the things they make and I don't go as far as they go because that's just not where my comfort level is. It doesn't mean I don't totally drool over their projects or wish that I had that natural aesthetic to put some of those things together or um, Wendy's ability to sew the way she sews. I mean, I would love that, but at the same time, I accept that's not who I am and what my style is and I don't think less of my style because it doesn't reflect what they do. It just makes me appreciate them all the more. And when it comes to Nick the Booksmith, when she does things, I pay attention probably more to the, what she's doing step by step because I know I want to incorporate some of that aesthetic because that is my aesthetic into my work and I learn from her. Now Mrs. Cog, I totally look at her books as just beautiful art pieces. I'm inspired by the way that she puts those together. And if I was going to do a book that I wasn't going to write in or a gift, then that would be who I um, definitely would be inspired by. And then I have to say in the last six months, 
I don't know if it's a new thing or it's just new to me, but all of this la layering and collaging has really excited me. And I tend to have been following a lot of people on Instagram. Um, I would say Rachel from Roxy Creation has inspired so many of us, hasn't she, with her collaging and her I relate so much to just her rip and non-measuring and going with her gut because it's very much who I am. Um, I, I am about the imperfection of things. You know, I think the freedom of just trying a project like this one here where I just took one magazine and decided I wasn't going to put anything in the magazine except for things that were already in the magazine and plain paper. And I just made a little booklet using just the pages of the magazine. Now, I love the bold graphics of this. And now what I'd like to probably do, because it's so plain, is make this into a collage book and start practicing some of the things that some of these people are doing. Um, Wendy has done a beautiful job, Wendy at Journal Adventure, of doing collaging. And I'm not gonna say her name right, but Martina at Tinkiella on Instagram, her, her work is so specific. I always know it's her, just like I always know it's Nick, just like I always know it's Roxy. That's when you know you've really tuned into your personal style, when you don't even need to see the name and you know exactly who it is. Now, that doesn't mean those people probably aren't trying new things too, but they just always go back to that style. Um, Angela at Angela.K50, who is just wonderful. She makes beautiful things with kits and she's really good at collage and she's lovely. In her videos, I look at her journals and I drool. Now, she, I call her the embellishment, my embellishment queen because she is like pearls and lace and flowers and butterflies and I love her work. I will probably never get to a place where I feel that comfortable putting that much together. And that's not saying hers is better than mine, mine is better than hers. It's just that's her style, this is my style, and I don't live comfortably in that space. It doesn't mean that I can't just love her stuff, and I do. Um, and then I'll, I'm going to put a few other people in my, in my description that I think do really great things with um, layering. But the last one I just want to mention, because I think this per, these people are really more of who my style is and who I probably will emulate as I go forward, is um, Jibid Neary. If anybody has seen Jibid's books, her books tell a story. Her books are art in themselves, but they're also journals that I would love to write in. Um, Stampy Stamps on Instagram, she totally taps into my dark side. I love a little bit of that, like, freak, a freaky freak. Uh, I like to let my freak flag fly sometimes. And by that, I mean something you haven't even seen here, something I'm working on now, which is sort of like a curiosity book. I love the old... I love the old feeling of circus and carnival, even though I don't like the politics of it. I love a little bit of, I love Halloween. It's one of my favorite holidays. So I like that little dark side. I like the whole Edgar Allan Poe and just, just a little bit of the macabre. I love things that are anatomy and kind of like not pretty and kind of creepy. Um, and I think that those things can be explored in a way that's really beautiful and, and also envelop your style. I think Martina did that really good um, when she went from her florals to her space uh, astrological um, journals recently. She transferred her style to them meticulously and in a way that they are probably some of the prettiest journals I've ever seen in my life and made me really rethink how I'm going to approach my space journals because I've been thinking about these for God over a year now and there's some things she did that I really loved and she was really inspiring to me. So I'm going to wrap this up by saying that style and aesthetics is a very personal thing and if you're a beginner do not beat yourself up if you don't know where you're going. You'll find your way. Um, if I had to put a 
I can't even put a specific thing on my style because I will say that I love children's books. I love recycling things. I'm not driven by already put together kits because something about the hunt speaks to me. Um, I love, like I just said, I love a lot of different subjects. That doesn't mean that I can't still stick with the core of my of what I know to be my emerging style, which is recycled materials, which is vintage vintage laces, vintage textile, lots of hardware um, and simplicity, but not over overdone because that's just not comfortable where I live. So my journals are going to be simpler. They're going to be more clean as far as the layering, um, but they're not going to be, I'm never probably going to feel comfortable doing page after page of beautifully embellished things because I love lots of little parts and pieces, but the layering is just not where I live. And I love the forest. So while I will enjoy flowers and I will enjoy English gardens and formality, I'm more of a mushroom, earthy moss kind of person. I'm more of a dirt under my fingernails playing with snails and insects than I am cutting a bouquet and putting a fancy piece of lace around it. I love both things, but I probably would be in the forest before I would be in the garden. So try to determine the things that are intrinsic to you and try to remember you can enjoy things and like things and not have them be a part of your style. It's totally fine. It just means that you'll maybe support and purchase from other artists so that you can enjoy them and you'll just further develop your own personal style and make that focus come cleaner and smaller until you know these are the things that are you. I hope that made sense. I feel like all I did was ramble, um, but I do think it's important to find your voice and there's more than enough places in this creative community to find our niche. I find this a very supportive community. Everybody can find things about each other's style that they can appreciate. And I've had more happiness and creative um, satisfaction from making books and being with you all than probably anything else I've ever done in my life. So thank you for indulging me and letting me talk about personal style. I hope my personal style is as it's emerging is clear to you and I hope it helps you find your personal style. Please go to my description box below. I'm going to list a lot of people who inspire me. This is clearly not a full list, but people that I have come back to a lot in the last couple of years and I think have a lot to say um, and hopefully will help you. And um, I hope we hang out again soon and um, take care. Bye-bye.